Dear listeners, welcome to the Deep Journal channel. By subscribing to our channel, you can be informed about detailed reports every time. As the conflicts between Israel and Iran intensify, it is seen as certain that the nuclear negotiations with Iran will end negatively. During the inconclusive nuclear talks in Vienna in the past weeks, Israel attacked pro-Iranian proxies in Syria and Iran's Natanz nuclear facility. The most important of these was the air attack on the port of Latakia. With the close cooperation of the Israeli Air Force and the Mossad, they successfully bombed the main shipping port of Iranian-backed militants in Syria. In this attack, the Russian air defense systems could not stop the missiles from the Israeli F-16s, and the Russian defense ministry admitted that they could not stop the Israeli missiles. On the other hand, Iran and the USA still have not come to a political conclusion and the US administration seems to be doing its best to prevent Israel from attacking Iran. However, it is not known how long the Biden administration can hold the strings of Israel. Because today, the Israeli administration has made it clear that it will use all kinds of attacks and methods to prevent Iran from reaching a nuclear bomb. While Israel has said from the very beginning that an agreement with Iran is not possible, when we look at the relations between Iran and the USA, it seems like a guarantee that there will not be a nuclear deal like Israel wants. In response, today the Israeli Air Force commander has been very precise about hitting Iran's nuclear facilities, giving a date for the attack. The commander of the Israeli Air Force said that they have everything to hit the Iranian nuclear facilities and that they can bomb the Iranian nuclear facilities tomorrow. He also emphasized that they are aware that Hezbollah in Lebanon will attack Israel immediately when Israel hits Iran, and that they should be prepared for the third Lebanon-Israel war. Israel knows that when it strikes Iran, it will come under attack by Hezbollah and thus by Hamas and other Iranian-backed militant groups. So, can Israel really take that risk? It remains unclear whether the US administration will allow Israel to carry out such an attack. However, it is known that the Iranian proxy Hezbollah militants in Lebanon have between 120,000 and 150,000 missiles and more than 2,000 drones. We also emphasized in our previous videos that Hamas militants increased their attacks against Israel and that internal rebellions began in Israel. For three months, the Israeli army has carried out very heavy exercises against the possible war with Iran and Iranian-backed militants. But is Israel really ready for this? Now let's examine the details together. Israel could successfully strike Iran's nuclear program tomorrow if necessary, incoming commander of the Israel Air Force, IAF, Major Gen. Tomer Bar said in an interview published on Wednesday. Bar, who currently commands the Force Design Directorate, will take command of the Air Force in April and could be the officer who will need to command a strike against Iran's nuclear program should ongoing talks in Vienna between Tehran and world powers fail. I have to assume it will happen in my time, and my shoulders already understand the weight of the responsibility," Barr told Yediat Aharonot. When asked if he thinks Israel can successfully destroy Iran's nuclear facilities, Barr stressed that there is no way that we will operate there, 1,000 kilometers from here, and I will return home without being able to say, I completed the mission. Despite reports about the lack of a budget hindering the IDF's preparations for a possible strike on Iran, the incoming IAF commander said that the situation is not black and white. From the moment I sat here at the head of the Force Design Directorate, and the Chief of Staff spoke with me, the mission of the Third Circle, Iran, was there, Barr told Yediat Aharonot. We are not starting from zero. We equipped ourselves with F-35S, do they, not know how to get to the Third Circle? We procured thousands of Iron Dome interceptors for multi-layer defense. Concerning the reported U.S. refusal to advance the delivery of two KC-46 tanker refueling aircraft to Israel, Barr said that he was at the meeting when the request was made and that the IDF is currently examining the reason for the refusal. The U.S. is more than an acquaintance, and they have a desire to form deep and real cooperation. I do not know the reason for the refusal, but I have not yet exhausted the possibility of getting at least two refuelers in advance. On the northern front with Lebanon, Barr said he believes that the next war with Hezbollah will break out as soon as Israel strikes Iran. I have to assume that he, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah, will automatically be all in. Thirty years he has waited for this order and there is no way that he will not be there and with the highest intensity, Barr said. We have to be prepared for this. 
The outgoing force design directorate head stressed that the Third Lebanon War cannot be compared to the first two wars with Lebanon. This is not raising the volume on the same radio. The familiarity with Hezbollah, the number of targets, the strength built over the years in matters of intelligence and attack capability, electronic warfare, cyber, make it a whole different scenario. I can stand by my word. Barr added that the next war with Lebanon will definitely involve a ground operation, saying that combined with the effectiveness of the IAF, is something else entirely. Even Hezbollah, does not know how to imagine our power, he said. Maybe they will try to bring in special forces or shoot at the home front, but we are no longer on this scale. We want a clear victory this time, in a shorter time and with fewer losses. The full interview with Barr will be published on Friday in the Seven Days magazine of Yediat Aharonot. Meanwhile, Iran must be stopped from obtaining a nuclear weapon, with or without a deal in Vienna, President Isaac Herzog said on Wednesday at the Israel Air Force's 183th flight course graduation ceremony. Iran is a ticking time bomb that threatens Israel and the whole Middle East, he said. This matter is a point of agreement in Israel's society and leadership. I am following the negotiations around the nuclear deal, and I call on the international community not to be led astray and not to underestimate the gravity of the threat. The Iranian nuclear threat must be neutralized once and for all, with or without an agreement. Iran must not be allowed to acquire nuclear weapons capabilities, he added. Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett met with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, who is visiting Israel, and said that the strong relationship between Israel and the U.S. allows the sides to talk openly and candidly about all the shared challenges that we're facing. These days are pretty important, Bennett said. What happens in Vienna has profound ramifications for the stability of the Middle East and the security of Israel for the upcoming years. And that's why it's such a timely meeting. In the meantime, Hezbollah has some 2,000 unmanned aerial vehicles, many of them advanced UAVs from Iran and others manufactured independently by the Lebanese militant group, a new report by the Alma Research Center has found. Hezbollah has been using UAVs since the 1990s and has used its drones in Syria as well as against Israel. Even before the Second Lebanon War in 2006, the group launched drones into Israel and during the war, Hezbollah launched several armed drones into the country. The report by Alma listed several attempts by Hezbollah to fly their drones into Israel, including in October 2012 when a UAV launched over the Mediterranean Sea reached the Negev region of Israel before it was intercepted by Israel Air Force jets. The group was said to have 200 Iranian-made UAVs in 2013 and with the help from the Iran, it has since significantly increased its fleet that is set to be used for kamikaze attacks on strategic national assets in Israel as well as reconnaissance against IDF troops and bases. According to the report, Hezbollah, most likely, has advanced UAV models such as the Mohajer, Shahed, and Samed, KAS-04, Karer, and SEG types. It also possesses dozens of smaller civilian drones made by China that are used to photograph as well as carry and drop bombs. Iran has been building its UAV army since 1984 and the fleet not only has a significant range of over 2,000 kilometers but it has very advanced development and operational capabilities, the report said. Iran realized that it could not provide a military response throughout the Middle East in general and against Israel, in particular facing an air force operating warplanes. Therefore, it sought to develop two alternatives in recent decades, the first, a precision surface-to-surface -surface missile system, and the second, a UAV army, the report said. Though Iran has hundreds of drones, the report highlighted nine different types of UAVs and 48 different models, including those that are operational and others that are still in trial phases. The report also discussed UAV models used by Hezbollah, Hamas, and Palestinian Jihad in the Gaza Strip. In September 2021, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz said that Iran's drone fleet is one of the most significant tools developed by Iran. It's an array of deadly, precision weapons that, like a ballistic missile or a plane, can cross thousands of miles. The Iranians produce and export these aircraft to their proxies, in coordination and led by the IRGC Air Force and Quds Force. According to Gantz, Iran is training militias from Iraq, Yemen, Lebanon, 
and Syria to operate and manufacture Iranian UAVs at Kashan base north of the city of Isfahan, the cornerstone of Iranian aerial terrorism in the region. In addition to Kashan, the report noted additional over 20 production, storage, and launch sites bases used by Iran to launch drones in Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Other than Kashan base, the report included Kanarik Civil Airport, located east of the city of Chabahar in southern Iran, Bundar Abbas Airport, Chagadak Airfield, Gonabad Airfield, Hamadan Air Base, Jakagur Airport, Jask Airport, Kushki Airport, Marian Airstrip, Minab Airstrip, and Seaman Airport. Tehran also attempted to send explosives to Palestinian terrorists in the West Bank from Syria using unmanned aerial vehicles, Gantz said. The attempted smuggling by the Shahed M141 UAV carrying TNT explosives occurred in February 2018 and while the IDF had originally said the drone was on the way to carry out a sabotage attack, its destination was, to our understanding, terrorists in the West Bank. Iran is not only using unmanned aerial vehicles to attack but to also transfer weapons to its proxies, he warned. Iran has also designed UAVs able to operate in a swarm of over 10 drones. Unveiled in April, Iran developed the drone with a combat warhead weighing between 5 to 15 kilograms with an operational range of 400 kms. A drone and missile swarm by Iran was first used in September 2019 against Saudi Arabia's Aramco oil processing facility in Bukuk, some 1,000 kilometers from where the drones were launched. The attack disrupted the kingdom's ability to produce oil for months and alerted the international community to the threat posed by Iran's drone arsenal. Iran has since carried out several more drone attacks, including the deadly attack on the MV Mercer Street that killed the British captain and Romanian security guard.